Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. COVID cases in India began to soar at the start of April. So why were Pakistan and Bangladesh added to the red list at that time, but not India? Was it because of the Prime Minister's planned trade visit? After finally adding India to the red list on the 19th of April, it didn't take effect until the 23rd. How many people arrived from India in those days trying to escape going into hotel quarantine? When I previously raised the issue of applying hotel quarantine to all travellers, the Secretary of State claimed the current system was protecting the UK. Does he now accept that the entry and community spread of the Indian variant shows this simply isn't the case? And that having a negative test doesn't rule out that travellers are carrying COVID? SAGE has stated that evidence shows the B1617.2 Indian variant is up to 50% more infectious than the Kent variant and have advised that, as in Scotland, areas with rising cases should remain under COVID restrictions. The Indian variant has been doubling every week despite lockdown. So why is he ignoring SAGE advice and opening up areas like Bolton that have exponential growth? Thankfully, this variant doesn't show significant vaccine resistance, but he must know it isn't possible to outrun the virus through vaccination alone. With those up to 35 not eligible for surge vaccination, this leaves a large pool of unvaccinated people in whom the variant can spread. And even those who receive a vaccine in the coming weeks, it will take two to three weeks before they are protected. Does he not accept that this variant is in danger of surging and that without local travel restrictions will spread to other areas? While it's good news that fully vaccinated people aren't ending up in hospital, just letting it spread among young adults could allow the evolution of yet another UK variant. Uh, uh, thank you.